I also do a lot of cold plunge and sauna as well. Yeah. So all these things just contribute so heavily to my recovery. And I say this all the time to a lot of my clients, uh, especially the ones that are training super intensively. Recovery is arguably more important than the actual training. Welcome back to another episode of the Peak Performance Life Podcast. Today, I am very excited here to be with Martin Nikolov. Martin is the co-founder of Optimability, uh, which shows you how to live the, I guess I'll let him explain it, but optimal life to your to your optimal ability. Uh, I might be butchering that, but we'll get into mm -hmm. it in a second. He's an Ironman athlete. He's a record-breaking power lifter. Um, he's, he helps busy professionals optimize all aspects of their health without sacrificing time spent in their business. He's a business student himself, a real estate consultant, a fitness authority, has a wide scope of skills. So he, we're going to talk. I know a lot of us here are busy professionals, and you hear people all the time saying they don't have time for this or their health gets neglected because they're too busy. Um, you know, at peak performance, we always do say we love the quote of uh, a healthy person has a thousand wishes but a sick person has only one. So we believe in prioritizing your health and making that a priority. And so really excited, Martin, to have you and to dive deep into this topic here. Quite the introduction. Thanks for having me, Talor. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's um, let's tell people a little bit about kind of like your story and how you um, maybe some talk about the Ironmans and the powerlifting and, and kind of how you got to where you are today, the short version. Absolutely. So I was actually a real estate consultant. I still am. And um, I was noticing that as I was starting up, my health was kind of on the back burner while I focused, you know, 12, 14 hour days just for real estate. And this was like, I was on the go. I had to uh, eat food. I would go through drive throughs I would stay up late for negotiations, you know, sacrifice my sleep. And then I would also, you know, skip workouts just to get uh, extra little bit of work in. And quickly, I noticed that my health was starting to deteriorate. So I figured I got to do something about this. You know, I can't keep this up forever. I'm, I'm a young guy. I can get away with so much, but, you know, eventually it'll catch up to me. So that's when I decided to really take my health seriously. And I came across Andrew Huberman. I'm sure uh, most of your viewers will know Andrew Huberman. And, you know, in a non-cheesy way, he he did change my life. I uh, instantly fell in love with peak performance, everything to do about health. And then I decided that, you know, it's time that I start applying these techniques to myself. And uh, quickly, you know, I, I devoured all the books, uh, podcasts, websites, everything. And I decided, hey, you know, I'm starting to live a better life. I feel more optimized, more productive, um, just more vibrant, more energetic. Why don't I help those around me get that same level? So that's when I started uh, Optimability. Me and my co-founder, we decided that, you know, we've been personal trainers in the past. So why don't we kind of expand into a more holistic approach and start helping people or more specifically, busy professionals like ourselves, why don't we start helping them optimize their health without them having to sacrifice time that they should be spending in their business? So that's how Optimability came about. And it's basically a, a holistic approach um, where we combine everything you need for health. That's meals, uh, workouts, uh, recovery, specialist referrals, everything into one place. So you can just do your business and then we take care of all that for you. Nice, nice, very cool. Yeah, like myself, doing uh, doing what you're passionate about, helping people improve their health. So there's definitely, I'm sure, a lot of people listening that um, that struggle with that, right? Even even myself, even though I prioritize health, still sometimes it's like, you know, have the kids, uh, you got uh, work. Um, you know, a lot of people. I, I guess I'm fortunate. I think you are as well, where we kind of. Um, get to kind of make our own schedule and in, in, in to a certain extent, some people don't have that luxury, they have to maybe work a, a, a regular kind of normal business hour job. Um, what what kind of suggestions or what are some of the things you've seen maybe from busy professionals that they're neglecting? And, and what are some of kind of the things that uh, that you guys uh, have seen that has worked in terms of them solving that problem? Great question. So I think the biggest thing for most busy professionals is that you're sitting down for most part of the day and it really affects a lot of the systems that go on in your body, uh, including digestion, circulation, you know, just everything. So if you're working a desk job nine to five and you're sitting down, one of the things that we've been able to help a lot of entrepreneurs do is incorporate standing throughout the day, whether that's a standing desk 
uh, more walks, just little things like this. They really start to set the table for what a healthy life should look like. So, you know, standing desks are, <laughs> they've been kind of uh, laughed at over the past couple of days. It looks like you yourself are at a standing desk. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So they, uh, I have one where it goes up and down. So yeah. that way I can sit for a little bit. I can stand for a little bit. And this has really helped uh, not only me, but a lot of the people we work with. And I think that's so vital, um, if not the standing desk, then even just to go for like a little bit of a walk uh, right when you wake up, after your meal, maybe as you're winding down. These little things, they seem like they're not very much, but over the long term, they compound to be so, so effective. Yeah, that, I mean... Talk about it. I haven't mentioned actually standing desk. I'm sure anyone who's seen the visual of the podcast, if they're watching it on YouTube, but I, I know more people actually listen via audio. So I'm not sure they've ever noticed that I, uh, I'm i I'm pretty much standing, I want to say 95% of the time, um, at least 90% of the time. Usually it's only like after my leg workout that I need to, uh, that, I, that I sit down uh, after mm -hmm. doing a bunch of squats or deadlifts or something. But um, it, for me, it's a humongous difference just in terms of my mental clarity, my physiology, right? Like when you think Tony Robbins always talks about like, think about what does a depressed person look like, right? They're hung over, they're slouched over. And I just notice when I'm sitting, I'm constantly slouched over. I don't have good posture. And, and for me, it's like, um, my mental energy and clarity is just way, way better when I'm, when I'm standing throughout the day. Um, and I was curious also, have you ever, or do you know anyone, I was looking into potentially buying one of those walking standing desk treadmills things. Mm. I haven't done that yet, but do you know anyone may, maybe who's done that as well? <laughs> yeah. So th those are a little tricky. I've actually used them, but uh, you know, depending on the speed you're going at, it's, it's, it's hard to focus on, on your work. You know, you right. can only multitask so much before it's like, okay, well now I'm walking and I got to focus on the steps and then I'm looking and the page is shaking. I can't really focus up. I mean, personally for me, I don't think it's, it's necessary. I would just rather go for the walk or, you know, go for my run, especially when I'm training for Ironmans. But some people, you know, if they, if they're at their desk for eight to 10 hours plus, yeah, by all means, if it works for you, then go ahead. Yeah, I, I was laughing one time. I was on a Zoom call with a guy and he was walking and eating lunch at the same time while on the Zoom call with me. And I was just I was I was like, dude, I was like, I mean, you're taking multitasking to the next level now. I'm not even sure if this is uh, if this is right or healthy, but uh, oh, yeah. it, it certainly was funny. Um, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, I kind of agree. One, I will say one challenge, one thing I need to focus on, and maybe I just have a little bit of tight hips in general, but I do find when you stand all day, um, you have to do a little bit more like hip stretching and hip mobility stuff because you're you're kind of locked in this position, and mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes uh, your your hips might get a little tighter from standing all day. So so it's certainly, and it's something I need to as we talk about it. I'm realizing, man, I really need to incorporate incorporate more stretching breaks and and uh, walk walking breaks and things like that for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Stretching is um, one of the most overlooked things that I've noticed for busy professionals as well. Because like you mentioned, you can be standing all day or sitting all day, and then you get tighter hips, uh, you know, tighter legs, everything, right? Yeah. And one thing that's worked for me that I've noticed, which it didn't really click for me until I started training for Ironman, is that I'll do stretching every single day in the morning and in the night. And what this does for me is it enables me to recover quicker and go into workouts a little bit more nimble. So mm. in a way, when I'm training for my Ironmans and I have you know, 15 hour, 20 hour weeks of just straight exercise. I'm much more nimble, much more able to recover. And it's just that much easier to not get injured and keep progressing with my, uh, with my training. So that's, stretching, absolutely vital. That's a great point. That's a, that's a really great point. And actually I was complaining, uh, to someone the other day that like, I'm always sore. I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, cause I'm doing weights uh, quite a bit. And it's like, you know, either my legs are sore or my chest is sore or my back is sore or something. And uh, I'm kind of kind of like, man, I want to kind of figure out a way to uh, to 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 resolve that. And I think doing more stretching at night and 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 what do you think about like, have you heard a lot of people now are really hating on static stretching before a workout? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are talking about static stretching should be done like 
either after or later in the day or at another time. And, and um, I don't know, I'll tell you what, though, if I go into a, if I go into the gym, and I'm feeling all stiff, um, not that I do like, you know, five minutes static holds, but you know, stretching my hamstring, stretching my hips, doing some things. I mean, I feel more awake, more nimble um, going into my workout. But then recently, like, no, I heard someone saying, no, it's a total waste of time wasted. I used to waste 30 minutes warming up and stretching. Now I just whatever. But curious your thoughts. Yeah, so I'm not familiar with the exact science of the difference between static stretching and dynamic stretching before a workout. But for me, I've noticed that I've actually switched from static stretching to dynamic stretching. And that's more like movement stretches. Um, at least for me, what I've noticed is that it gets a little bit more blood flow into the muscles. Mm -hmm. So static stretching is more, uh, you know, it's less movement. It's more so staying there, holding the position and just really breathing into the muscle. And I, that's great. You know, I, I still do static stretches throughout the day, but I find that before a workout, the most number, the number one most important thing to do is to get blood flow into that area that you're about to work out. And for me, at least dynamic stretching where you're moving around, maybe swinging your legs, swinging your arms, doing some banded pullovers, that gets that done much more efficiently than the static stretches. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Let me ask you about uh, Ironman. I know uh, there's a lot of people that might be interested in it. Um, and uh, I know I've heard a lot of people who who do it. It's it's pretty intense. What exactly, maybe I guess first define it. I know that there's running, swimming, and 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 cycling. How how much of it on each one? Um, and how long does it take usually for you to complete an Ironman or for the average person? And then maybe talk a little bit about your training, uh, how you prepare for one of those. Yeah, absolutely. So. Ironman, the distance, if uh, for anybody that's not familiar, you start with a 3.8 kilometer swim, and then right out of the water, you get into the bike for 180 kilometers. And then after the bike, you do a 42.2 kilometer run, a uh, marathon. And then typically that would take, you know, you're allowed 18 hours before it's over. But the world record is, I believe, seven hours, 40 minutes. And average, I would say, is maybe 11 to 12 hours. So wow. it, it quite intensive. For I sure. didn't realize it was a full marathon on the running side of things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which part is generally, I know, obviously, a swimmer will say that the swimming is easier. But generally, which part do people find uh, to be the most uh, energy consuming, the hardest? I would say the run, because that's the final event. And mm. you've swam four kilometers, you've biked 180 kilometers. And now you have to run a marathon. And a lot of people see that as the most daunting thing. So at least from my Ironman, I noticed that the most people dropped out on the run because it's mm. the most intensive. You know, like you're on the bike, you're just pedaling. It's not too bad. On the water, you're floating above it. You're, you're swinging your arms. That's also not too bad. But on the run, you have so much more impact on the ground because you have to move you have to take steps you, you know your body weight the gravity everything contributes so the run definitely has been a you know biggest killer for for most people trying to finish an Ironman and even for me I, I thought you know halfway through the run I thought I wasn't going to finish just because I had blisters on my toes you know blood was everywhere a couple of toenails fell off you know for your discretion and <laughs> um it, it wasn't great but when you finish it, it's just the most amazing feeling and it's all worth it in the end, all the training, all the hours. So, you know, highly recommend it to anybody that's willing to go through the training and, uh, you know, that's looking for some sort of mental toughness endeavor to be completed in their life. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, that's cool. Um, yeah, I heard Jesse Itzler recently talking, uh, about, he called it a misogi. Uh, mm -hmm. which was like a once a, you know, and every year, at least having one big Misogi and, you know, for him, it's usually like some ultra marathon, hundred mile race or Ironman or, or something. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, it doing some, doing something really hard. Right. Um, certainly, certainly there's a sense of, a, of accomplishment there. Um, what made you get, get interested in, in wanting to do an Ironman like that? Great question. I, uh, I first started reading self-help about two, three years ago, and I came across David Goggins' Can't Hurt Me. I don't know if you're familiar mm. with this book. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, by far one of my top, top three still. And um, it, it just changed my perspective on what can be done, what can be achieved. 
especially knowing what he's gone through, his life story. And I was like, well, if he can do it, why can't I? Right. Mm. And the more I started training and, you know, eventually when I finished the Ironman, what went through my head is if I can do this, you know, if I can exercise for 13, 14 hours straight nonstop and just put my mind through that battle, what can't I do? So, you know, it really set a baseline for just what you're able to achieve when you put your head down and focus on something day in and day out. Eventually, you know, things will go your way. You know, at first it's like, I don't know if you've seen this image, but it's like a person moving a square block and it's super hard to push it. And then as he keeps, you know, giving effort and, and pushing, it starts to mold into more of a circular block. And before you know it, you know, a couple of months, time, couple of years, that circular block is just flowing. All he has to do is just touch it with his finger. And it's like, you know, no effort given. You have everything going your way because you've put all the hours in and it's so much easier to just go through with it. So, you know, it, it's been uh, it's been definitely a, a huge learning journey, but I think the more that I do it, the more it starts to, everything starts to make sense. And yeah, I'm just, I'm super grateful for even having the opportunity to, to read about Goggins and, and be able to apply that to my own life. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I got his new, I, I actually just bought can't hurt me, uh, for, for a younger, a younger guy that I'm, uh, kind of mentoring a little bit. So, uh, and, and recommended that one to him. And then I just bought his new book as well. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, crazy, crazy story. He's definitely extreme for some, I know some people, the knock on him might be, it's just too extreme. I think mm -hmm. you have to kind of take everything with a grain of salt. I think it's good to have, you don't have to be extreme as him. You don't have to run, you know, hundred mile races, but if you get just a little bit of, um, having a stronger mentality. Right. And so I imagine, like you said, one of the things you just mentioned was kind of like a lot of people quit uh, mm -hmm. in, in the race, in the running part of the, of the, of the Ironman. Right. And you even, right. I'm sure the thoughts crept in your mind, like, you know, my, you know, my, my feet are hurting. I got blisters on my feet are bloody. Like, you know, should I just, you know, why you know, you're probably like, why am I doing this again? Right. Like mm -hmm. the thoughts going through your mind. And then um, I guess you learn a lot about yourself and, and mental, mental strength. Right. Absolutely. That's by far one of the most, uh, mental mentally tough things that i've ever done in my life uh, and like you said you know it's uh, you ask yourself why am i doing this all the time uh throughout the whole race you, you know i was asking as soon as stuff start, started to suck i was asking myself why am i doing this why am i doing this but i think uh, i was very fortunate to have my why solidified long before i even started training and, and like i mentioned the why was if i can do this what can't i do so for me, it was, you know, completing it was more of a sense of being able to do whatever I set my mind to. So I knew that no matter what, if need to be, I was going to crawl to that finish line. And that's how I, how determined I was. And I think that, um, you know, if you can finish an Ironman race and apply that same mental focus and, and willpower, then you can essentially do whatever you set your mind to. Mm. That's, that's, that's really, really powerful. I love that. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like training for an Ironman when you're, when you're a busy professional like yourself? Um, you know, you're doing a startup, you're, you're, you're in real estate, you're, um, and you're also training for a marathon. What is, what is it kind of a, a day in the life, uh, look like when you're training? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's pretty hectic with, uh, the startup, especially because, as you're probably aware, it's a lot of back and forth. You're running around, maybe putting out fires here and there. So I personally have, um, you know, made my mornings almost, you know, religious. Like I don't touch any technology until about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And within that time, I wake up maybe 5, 30, 6 a.m. And then I'll do one part of my training. And then I'll do two to three hours of deep work whatever that need be with, uh, with a startup or real estate. And then I'll start answering emails and taking phone calls, uh, podcasts after 10 o'clock. And then uh, that'll go until about, you know, four or five o'clock. And then I'll do my evening training. So, you know, sometimes depending on the day, I'll do uh, like a run in the morning, a bike in the evening, or uh, a swim in the morning, run in the evening, whatever it may be. But ideally it's, never throughout the middle of the business day because that's when it's you know the most busy the most important and it's like i can't be running and taking phone calls right 
So it's always towards early mornings and uh, later at nights, maybe like six to seven. I don't like to do too late because then it kind of affects my circadian rhythm um, and affects my sleep. And, and as you know, sleep is super, super important when you're doing this much exercise. You're going to make sure you're recovering equally as hard, if not recovering harder. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to just ask you about recovery, actually, because uh, again, like I said, I'm sore all the time. And I'm not even I'm only training probably half as much, well, not even half as much uh, uh, in terms of what, what you just mentioned. Um, what are so obviously sleep is a big thing you mentioned. I imagine you're probably not doing things like fasting and intermittent fasting when you're expending so much energy, right? You probably need to consume a certain amount of calories. Um for recovery and, and for your muscles, right? I, I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, so it really depends on on the training cycle. I, I do intermittent fasting when it's possible, but you know those peak weeks of uh, 15, 20 hours, it's <laughs> not very possible. I'm expending sometimes you know five, six thousand calories a day, so I need that morning nutrition, afternoon nutrition, and evening nutrition. Whereas if I'm doing maybe a lighter week with like seven hours, maybe ten hours then I can have that window of uh, no food until about 11. And then to get my 3000 ish calories until about 7pm. So eight hours. But I think, you know, fasting is is uh, extremely beneficial. But for me, what has been the most beneficial is really, really taking my sleep seriously. So I have a set circadian rhythm from 10 to six, every single night, uh, no electronics before bed. I get my morning, uh, morning light, morning walks. And uh, I don't know if you do this as well, but I tape my mouth. So I did it for a while. Yeah, I did it for a while. I don't think I'm a mouth breather. So I didn't continue. And I found I was sometimes I'd wake in the middle of the night and be like, uh, something, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. But I, I highly recommend it, especially if you're not sure. But uh, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of it. I'm a big fan of, of mouth taping. Yeah, you know, I tried not doing it for a while and i would just wake up a little bit unrested i would notice that it was a little bit different so i figured might as well just keep it as it is and whenever i keep it on my mouth it's you know i wake up that much more refreshed that much more energetic um i never really wake up with sore muscles anymore i think uh a big thing about the sore muscles is uh, pushing past your weekly allowed volume that your body can handle um, mm. as well as uh, hydration sleep um I also do a lot of cold plunge and sauna as well. Yeah. So all these things just contribute so heavily to my recovery. And I say this all the time to a lot of my clients, especially the ones that are training super intensively. Recovery is arguably more important than the actual training. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's important. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to mouth taping again. I got my mouth tape uh, uh, oh, next to the bed. I'm going to start using it uh, more regularly. I slacked off a little bit with that, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Um, yeah, it's 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 an interesting thing, right? Because like, you hear on one side, you're like, in order to get strong, like in terms of weightlifting, maybe, I don't know, in terms of Ironman training and, and long distance stuff. But in terms of weight training, you're like, yeah, I want to, I want to, you know, I want to put on more muscle. So I gotta, I gotta lift heavy, I gotta kind of, you know, and then but then, you know, then I am, then I am sore, um, which I guess is a good thing. Maybe it means my muscles are, are you know, are building or working, but then also, if uh, I, I really got to find that balance, right? Because sometimes like in the moment at the gym, I'm, I got the pump going, I'm ready to go. I want to keep going. I want to go hard. But then then it's like, oh, man, I worked out too hard yesterday. I need a day off today when when maybe if I would have taken it down a notch, I could have gone gone two days, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the biggest misconceptions about uh, soreness is that the more sore you are, the more muscles you're building and, and the harder, you know, you're going to be recovering. But it's actually not the case. You know, a lot of the things uh, I learned with Ironman training is that your body has a, a certain weekly volume for exercise that it can withstand. And the more you push past that, the more it's actually uh, detrimental to your overall recovery and, and whatever gains you are making. So That's great example of this. Yeah, a great example of this is... Uh, are you familiar with shin splints? Have you ever had shin splints in your calves, shins? I, I ran cross country track in high school. Uh, so back then, I think I got them a little bit, but not since then. Yeah. Yeah. So I would always, uh, before my my training, before I actually had a trainer to show me what to do, I'd always just go out onto the road and do like 10 kilometers, 12 kilometers. And I would think, 
excuse me, and I would think, oh, this is how you train. Like you just go run no matter what, whatever distance, just do it, just go run. But I would always get shin splints and my shins would just hurt so bad and just like the aching, right? Uh, it wasn't until like a couple months later that I found out you're only getting shin splints because you're training past your body's ability to uh, to withstand that type of exercise. So mm -hmm. what I learned is that there's a certain weekly volume that you can hit and everybody is different genetically or whatever their fitness level is. And once you can understand what that weekly volume is before you start having, you know, detrimental effects like shin splints, then you can just go just below it. And then every week progressively overload on top of that. And then that way I was starting with like 30 kilometer weeks and then the next week, 35 and then 40 and 45 and <laughs> no shin splints. It was, it blew my mind. Mm. So one thing that a lot of people will, will mistake going into this type of training is that I'm just going to go and beat my body up and just do as much as I possibly can when it's actually on the contrary, you're supposed to ease into it very gradually and learn what your body can withstand and then increase on top of that. That is a fantastic point. Uh, I really hope everyone he heard that the way that I just heard that as well. Um, very, very important. And I've seen it actually with, uh, you know, I'm in some business groups and things like that. And I see some people who are like, all right, like, especially now, right? It's like New Year's resolution. Like, I'm going to go hard and they get a trainer five days a week. You know, they go from doing nothing to like having a trainer five days a week and and the trainers pushing them and they're going hard and then they're super sore and then you know inevitably they they either burn out or get injured or something right and so i think this uh you know especially for people who are kind of not in in top physical shape but they want to get into top physical shape i think this is this is one of actually now that i think about it this is a big block i think for people who are let's say you know your, your typical kind of uh, let's say 40, 50 year old businessman who's kind of neglected his health the last, you know, 10, 20 years. And, you know, maybe, maybe he or she is, is 30 pounds overweight or whatever. And they're like, okay, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to get back into it. I'm getting a trainer. And then they just start going hard and then they're sore and then they're exhausted and beat up. And um, one thing for me that's important is like, I want to be able to work out and it, I want it to, I want it to give me mental energy right? I want to come back to my computer and have more mental clarity and more mental energy, right? And not be, you know, I don't want to come back and 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 be so worn out and tired and drained that I just want to sit down on the couch or or, or lay down, right? That's that's counterproductive. And so, so what advice, I guess, would you have then for, for that person, right? We're not talking Ironman training, we're talking kind of like a, a typical, you know, slightly overweight person who's now ready to make a change. Yeah. So I just want to say as a great connection you made there with, uh, you know, how that applies to business and, you know, people looking to get into their news resolution and they just like head first jump into five days a week and they get super sore. Uh, one thing I wanted to add on top of that is it, it's, it applies to so many parts of life, especially I've seen it with like habits and people will set all these habits, uh, read an hour a day, uh, drink four liters of water, exercise, sleep eight hours, no caffeine, things like this. And it's just so much at once that mm -hmm. eventually your mental just can't handle it. And then you end up relapsing, you end up binging, whatever it might be. And, you know, tying into the kind of psychology mental part of it, I think it's super important, not only in training, but habit building, everything to kind of ease gradually into new things, uh, one thing at a time. So like habits, if you want to set a new habit, just focus on that one thing for however long, maybe 30, 40 days. And then we're able adding on top of that, not doing all five or however many habits you want to set and just like cold turkey trying to go as, as far as possible with that, right? So uh, in terms of somebody that's overweight looking to get into it, I would say, you know, same philosophy applies. Just focus on one thing at a time. If you're, you know, 400 pounds, 300 pounds overweight, don't worry about your meal plan and then uh, fitness and then recovery and then you have to do all the sleep and then supplements just worry about one thing whether that's 10 minutes a day just get up walk you know 20 minutes 30 minutes however long and then progressively overload that and keep building until you're at a point where you're comfortable you know that this has been a, a habit that's solidified and then you can keep adding and now let's say cut out all the junk food 
I would say maybe cut out all the junk food first and then also mm-hmm. incorporate fitness, but you could go a little bit deeper and then just, uh, you know, add a little bit more cardio or add uh, recovery protocols, things like this, I would say are super important. And it's extremely important to not get a, a ahead of yourself by doing so many things at once. Yeah. Yeah. Really good point. Really good point there. Mm-hmm. Um, so talk, tell us a little bit about, I know we're kind of coming close to the end here. So tell us a little bit about Optimability and, you know, some of the, some of the maybe case studies or, or results or, uh, you know, benefits that people uh, get from it. Absolutely. So um, let me ask you, are, are you a busy professional? Yes, I am. And you've tried to get your health on track before. And uh, have you ever, you know, have you ever been at your most peak performance other than right now? Um, I, I've certainly, certainly had, certainly had phases of, of, yeah, I think now I'm more steady and consistent. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm also, I think I've developed, uh, a lot of discipline. And also I think I'm, I'm at the point now where I crave healthy food and I crave exercise. I'm almost addicted to these positive things, but, but yeah, so maybe I'm not the best example or maybe I am. Yeah. No, no, you are. That's, that's great. That's exactly the type of busy professional that we're turning our, turning our clients into. Mm. So, uh, you know, target market of what we're looking for is, is ideally busy professionals that they've been healthy before. Maybe they lost it. They, they got busy with travel or, or family or work, whatever it might be. And, you know, they just don't have the bandwidth to get there again, but they understand how important it is to be healthy. You know, like they say, health is wealth. And uh, you, you can never buy you can never buy your health. It's it's always through consistent hard work and daily action. So what Optimability does is it makes that process as seamless as possible for you by delivering meals right to your doorstep. You have everything you need in a calendar for your workouts, whatever recovery protocols you might have, and as well as specialist referrals in your area for things that might be stopping you, like maybe you have an injury. Um, Maybe you you want to go see a doctor about something that that you think is going to impede your performance moving forward. And then slowly but surely every week, we kind of add on top of that so that eventually you can be living at, at your most optimal ability without having to worry about, oh, what am I going to eat today? What's my workout? Oh, I have to make this plan. Oh, I have to go see this referral or this specialist. And you know, that way it just lets you work on your business. You're a busy professional. We understand that that's what you have to do. But at the same time, you know, what good is all the money you're making if you can't live well into your 60s, 70s, 80s, maybe even 90s with uh, with where your health is? So that's kind of what we encompass. We try to put everything together in a simple package for you. And that way it's as easy as possible. You don't have to worry about anything and just like that. Awesome. Awesome. And where, uh, what's the website or where can people follow you or learn more about that? Yeah. So our website is optimability.com. That's O P T I M A B I L I T Y.com. Um, my Instagram is real Martin Nikolov. And, uh, you can also find us on Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, optimability. We're, uh, we're all over the place. We're also going to be starting our own podcast soon, but yeah, we, we've just, uh, launched about a month ago and, uh, getting lots of traction. We have clients in Australia, uh, Chicago, UK. um, And actually we're based in Vancouver, which is funny enough because we decided to stay local, but you know, people around the world, they, they like the idea. So we, uh, we can't say no, if you, if you're looking to get your health optimized, right? Amazing. Amazing, man. Yeah. Well, this is, this has been a great discussion. Uh, I really, I enjoyed it. I, uh, I got reminded and learned, learned things and got reminded of things that uh, I need to be doing more of and being aware of. Uh, I think the listeners really got a lot of value out of this as well, and I would highly encourage people to 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 check you out if there's you know a busy professional that is looking for that kind of uh, seamless uh, guidance and, and integration of health in their lives. So um, yeah, yeah. Martin, th- any any closing words before we uh, wrap here? No, I just uh, really appreciate you having me on, Talor, and um, I, you know maybe we'll we'll uh, have you on our podcast in the future. Absolutely. Happy to do it, man. Yeah. Thanks so much for, uh, for a great conversation here today and, uh, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you.
Thanks for listening. And just a reminder, if you haven't yet tried any of our Peak Performance products, you get 20% off your first order. We have one of the largest selection of USDA certified organic superfood powders, as well as very high quality supplements. And you get 20% off your first order at buypeakperformance.com. That's www.buypeakperformance.com.